Welcome to Three Questions with Matt Rhodes. There we go. Music, the whole thing. All right. So Matt and I were actually talking. We had connected uh, in the worst year of all time, 2020, <laughs> right? We had met, uh, and we actually met in uh, what you said was Concordia, right? Because I actually remember distinctly having a conversation with you. Uh, it was like, the, the day before Kobe Bryant passed away and it was like just a weird you know so I'm glad that we're actually getting to connect well uh, hopefully like you know nothing doesn't goes wrong after this right because it seems like <laughs> things went wrong, really bad after right since we met so hopefully we're not like bad luck but um I'm glad that we stay connected I'm glad that we're you know continuously uh having conversations and it's kind of neat I actually saw um, you know, some of the stuff I've been watching the stuff that you've been posting and sharing. I know we've, we've had a couple conversations since then. So, um, really thanks for being on the podcast. Thanks for connecting and sharing and learning. Uh, we're going to talk about, um, in our other podcast, we're going to talk about your amplifying learning, uh, book series. And, uh, I know you're doing some work with EduMatch, uh, with Sarah Thomas, who, uh, Sarah Thomas is like been a guest on here. Sarah Thomas is awesome. So I'm going to give a little preemptive a shout out to Sarah. So. Matt, uh, I know that you inspire a lot of people with all the stuff that you're sharing on Twitter, but when you think of a teacher um, in your trajectory, who's a teacher that inspired you and why? So I'd say my fourth grade teacher, Ms. Kaiserman, is one of them. Uh, she essentially gave me that confidence in myself. I was really struggling with school for the first number of grades in my life. And um, as someone that, has, um, that had an individualized education plan, um, high functioning, really high functioning autism, but I was un really struggling with school. And then she mm -hmm. essentially provided me with a lot of that confidence. Just, I, I don't necessarily know what she did, but she did something that gave me the confidence that made everything start clicking. Mm -hmm. And I was able to start, um, you know, understanding what I was doing and, and being successful in school. <laughs> and just, I don't, it's not necessarily that action, but it's just always that, that thought that she, inspired that light to go off well hey miss kaiserman just gotta get a little, <laughs> little shout out there. I, there I remember actually listening to uh dr yang Zhao. he's speaking and he was talking about um that in he said this specifically he was talking about like uh u.s schools versus other countries he said that um confidence is actually one of the things that is is actually really high in the u.s and I, i'm not and he kind of said it as a joke but he also talked about um how beneficial that is to innovation, right? Because like, if you're confident, you're more likely to take risks, you know, try things that haven't been tried before, and how important that is. So I think we kind of like lessen and I think, you know, there is, I've always kind of talked about this, this continuum of like, insecurity versus arrogance, and kind of how confidence is kind of in that middle. And sometimes we get arrogance and confidence mixed up either way. But I think that is really important is that we develop that com confidence in ourselves. And so that that, that, that is awesome that um, you remember a teacher that long ago that instilled that in you. So um, you've done a, a ton of different roles in education. You have a very unique role, and we'll talk more about that in the other podcast uh, right now. But in your roles um, that you've had, who's like an administrator that really struck, stuck out to you and why? Um, I would say it's a couple people. Um, and if they're definitely were an administrator um, in a previous role or current my current um administrator right now that oversees um, our consortium. So first, I would say um, Dr. Uh, Doug Grove from Concordia University, Irvine, uh, just someone that was um, really um, gave me a lot of support in my research and everything that I was doing, um, as well as Dr. Belinda Card, who really supports me in just my work right now, um, supporting schools and teachers and um, also, um, Kathleen Porter, who is my current, uh, supervisor, um, at our consortium and, and they all have given me flexibility and freedom to try new things. And I think that that's the theme is that right. if, if you're providing that educator or teacher with that flexibility and freedom to try things in their classroom and to try and do different things in their life, um, and give them the support and, um, you know, means to do so, then that's, that's so huge. And that really supports them in, um, you know, our goals and the goals of the school. And that's been something that is, um, you know, gave me a lot of um, just really confidence in myself and support me in my career. 
Well, they actually like it. <laughs> I, I kind of feel bad because some people are listening to this podcast and you are uh, like listing, you know, three, like three administrators that you work with currently. And some people can't like, like list three, their, their, like their entire, you know, career. So uh, you seem pretty lucky here, but how do they, how do you, would you actually say they, they install that, that confidence in you like that, how they, you know, like what are some examples of how they actually do that? Yeah. So for example, for, um, in my current situation, um, my administrator who oversees the entire, uh, consortium and our adult education program is that she allowed me to build our coaching program and professional mm -hmm. development program from scratch and taking my experiences from, coaching at the K-12 level, as well as consulting with districts in California, Arizona, um, you know, taking that information that I've gathered from my experiences and said, hey, you know, go ahead and, you know, go ahead and do that as long as it meets mm -hmm. with our goals. And it does align with the goals of building, um, you know, teacher toolboxes and skills related to um, building classrooms within in-person, online and blended learning um, settings and um, building that capacity for our teachers. And I think that flexibility and freedom to build that and seeing what you've seen that's worked in the past, what's not worked, mm -hmm. looking at the research, um, to me, that's, you know, really been beneficial in my career, giving me that trust and flexibility and freedom to do it. Well, and that, that to me, um, I, I, I don't know, there's a sentiment there and I, I don't want to credit it to me, but it's basically like the best way to like, to you know see the future is to create it right and that that giving that opportunity to actually like develop those programs gives you a lot of ability to like initiate change and how how powerful that is so we're going to give you like a, a little i won't i won't press it three times even though i want to so badly <laughs> but uh shout out to all three of them so uh, matt when you look at your career and you look at all the learning that you've done you've been blessed with some pretty amazing educators um in your work obviously from your stories when you go back to your first year of teaching and all the stuff that we've learned um, over time, what is something that you, if you can go back and talk to your first year teacher self, what advice would you give? I would just say, try not to be perfect and think less is more. Those are the two big things. And I think that a lot of times when you're doing something new, especially it's a pressure situation, I think they're in that first year wanting to try and, you know, make it through, um, build relationships with your students, make everyone around you happy. And, you know, it, it, at the end of the day, it's um, it's a learning experience that first year and you don't have to be perfect. It, it, it's, you know, and realizing that teaching and, and education is not that, it's not perfect. It's never gonna be right. perfect. And just being okay that you're gonna have, you know, really good days and then you have bad days. But the great thing is, is there's always another day and you can go in and do that. And then also I think with just the notion of, Think less is more. You don't need to be great at everything. You just need right. to focus on your strengths. Be strength focused. That so many people have gifts and skills that they can bring into a classroom. You know, utilize them and build those connections, those relationships, and um, and then move forward with it and um, use those strengths to help you build your toolkit. Yeah, and I think I think like this is something I'm guilty of too, and a lot of, you know a lot of educators is that you try to do everything, and when you try to do everything and you do nothing well, right? Like exactly. everything seems to kind of fall off. And it, it often comes not only at the expense of your students, uh, which is horrible, but it comes at the expense of ourselves, right? Because we start losing touch with with other aspects. And uh, you, you look at some like companies, I always, I actually talked about the idea of less is more an innovator's mindset. Um, you look at um, companies like Apple that don't make a ton of things, but the things that they do are considered really, really, you know, great things that, and they, they built a name. Whereas you see some other companies that are trying to just get into every market, but they don't necessarily have anything that, that would be considered quality. So I, I, I love that, um, that idea and that notion of like being perfect, I think it, like perfect and learning do not go together, right? Because <laughs> if you're perfect, you wouldn't need to learn. Right. And so I, I think that's a, a really powerful statement. So, uh, Matt, I'm looking forward to, uh, talking more about your amplifying learning series. And, uh, I really appreciate you taking the time, uh, out of your day to sit down with me. I actually, you know, and I'll, I'll be honest with you, actually, uh, you and I've connected and you said something about listening to my podcast. I'm like, well, if you listen, you might as well be on, right. And then you're going to have to, you're going to have to sit through yourselves one time. So, and yeah, go through it. So, um, thanks so much for the shout out. Thanks for, uh, connecting with me today. And, and thank you everyone for taking the time to listen. There we go, Matt.